Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this Blender physics and animation tutorial. And today we are going to see how to create this great idea by using soft bodies to emulate a game of Tetris. And the idea came from Nico Schatzes, that you can find in Vimeo. And I think it's a great way for people to learn about soft bodies in Blender. So the first thing we want to do is set these to cycles and set this to GPU in case your graphic card is supported. If you don't know if your graphic card is supported, you can go to files, in user preference, go to system and down here it will appear CUDA or not. And press save user preference. Now we are going to use this default cube and if you press N, you can see his dimensions are 2x2x2, two by two by two, which is good, because if we take a look into the Tetris pieces, we see that the square is 2x2. Two and with this measure, we will be able to create the other pieces. Ok, so let's go back to our cube, enter in edit mode and divide it 3 times by pressing double V and selecting subdivide. Let's go back to object mode and create a ground, scale it up with S to something like this. Ok, so now we select the cube and go to the physics separator, which is the last one and we can press in soft bodies. And since we want our objects to collide with the ground, we can select the ground and apply a collision. If you press Alt A to play, you can see that our soft body looks like it's floating. You can press Alt A to stop and shift left arrow to go back to frame 1. And it's floating because in the soft body we have a soft body goal selected. If you uncheck it, now the cube responds to physics and it will fall and collide with the ground and it will shrink a lot. And by the way, soft body goal is great when you have an object animated. It will allow you to select which verses are affected by soft bodies, as you can see in this example. Ok, back to our cube, we can press shift left arrow to go back to frame 1 and now we want to go to the soft body edges, which is where basically everything is going to happen. And if you push the bending value to 5, you will notice that the cube doesn't shrink anymore. So we can perceive this as 0 will deform a lot and 10, which is the max, will have little to none deformation in our geometry. Now let's press on smooth in this left panel so we don't see these faces everywhere. That looks better, but let's go to modifiers and add a subsurface modifier. If you think it's necessary, you can increase this view to 2. And we are going to disable the subsurface modifier before simulating everything, by the way. So let's set the pull and the push to 0 0.9 and the bending to 9. And if you press Shift A, you can see that it doesn't stretch too much. So the pull is for how much the edges are going to stretch. 0 is for a very elastic material and 0 0.99 is for something that doesn't stretch like leather. And the push is for how much the soft body resists compression. 0 is for a tissue or a fabric which folds and it doesn't resist compression. And 0 0.99 is like a balloon full of air to the limit, it doesn't compress that much or like an inflatable. Now if we lower our pull and push to 0.2, we end up with a much more flexible object. Now for the damp option, it basically softens the stiffness, I didn't use it. And the plastic is a really great option, because it lets us decide if the geometry is permanently deformed by collisions. And we also don't need this for this exercise. And the length value at 0 means this option is disabled and at 100% the object keeps 100% of its size. Ok, so this is pretty much all we need to know about the soft bodies. And my final values for the pull and the push was 0 0.7 and for the bending was 8. The damp was 0, the plastic was 0 and the length was also 0. So, after you have found the values that satisfy your ideas that you like, our next step here is to create the other pieces of Tetris game. 
So let's add another cube from the Shift A menu. And now if we want to create the long bar in the right panel, we type 4 in Z and 1 in X. The Y value, I'm gonna leave it at 2, but you can change it if you want. And by the way, we are going to copy all the modifiers and the soft body that we created for the cube at the same time in just a few moments. For now, let's create another cube for the T-shape key. And for that, we can set the value of 1 in the Z axis and 3 in the X axis. We easily create the rest of the shape by entering in edit mode. And with Ctrl R, we can scroll up to add two rings like this. Now we can press left click and without moving, press enter. We select the mid face and with E, we extrude the value of 1 like this. Let's go back to our object mode and add another cube for the L shape. And we set the value of 1 in the Z axis and 3 in the X axis. We enter in edit mode and again we use Ctrl R to add two rings by scrolling up. This time select the first face and extrude the value of 1 in the Z axis. And for the last piece, the Z piece, we create another cube set the value of 1 in the Z axis, we enter in edit mode and extrude with E in the Z axis a value of 1 like this and then we extrude in the X axis a value of 1. And we have done all the pieces that we need. Now to copy everything from the first cube which already has the soft body with the settings you like it, we select all the four pieces and in last select the cube. We press Ctrl L to create a link and we want to select modifiers. And as you can see this only happens because we have less geometry than the cube. So we have to enter in edit mode and with double V we divide two times. And for the long piece we need to add two rings before subdividing. We add two rings with Ctrl R. And then we want to press double V to subdivide two times. Let's also subdivide two times the T-shape piece and the Z-shape one. Now you can also apply the smooth to each piece. After doing so, we only need to go to the physics tab and add a collision to each one of the four pieces, since Blender doesn't consider the collision a modifier. And that's it for our pieces. Now we need to create the rest of the scene, which is really simple actually. So let's select the ground and press Shift S to select cursor to select it. And now with Shift A we can create a cube. Let's enter in edit mode and with Ctrl R we can cut in half like this and delete the other side. Now we go to the modifiers, add a mirror and now we can move it behind our pieces. Like this. So let's see this from the top view with 7 from the numpad and by pressing 5 you can switch between orthogonal view and perspective view and if you go take a look to the original Tetris we can count that horizontally we have space for 10 units which means in the object mode we are going to enter 10 in the X axis like this and scale it down in the Y axis just to make it thin enough now let's enter in edit mode and vertically Tetris has space for 20 units. Let's add that space like this. And let's move our pieces to the top. And start putting them side by side. Until we have something like this. And make sure they don't touch each other. Because as you can see, horizontally we only have 10 units. But since we have to leave some space between the pieces so they don't collide with each other at the beginning, we have to make sure that the container, the walls, have to be a bit bigger than 10. Maybe 10.5 at least. So we can have space enough for all the pieces. So let's change it, give it a bit more space. We need to edit the rest of the wall, which is very simple again and with Ctrl R. We cut here and extrude with E until we got something like this. And again with Ctrl R, we add a new edge ring and extrude in the X axis until we create something like this. 
Now with Shift tab, select Vertex and we erase these four vertices like this. And we can select the four vertices to create faces with F just to make things easier when creating the UV maps. You can apply the mirror modifier to this ball. And now we want to create another cube to cover the front part like this. This cube will prevent the soft bodies to fall down. And we also go to object properties and we select wire here. This way it appears only in wire in viewport. And down here in cycle settings, let's uncheck everything so it doesn't so it doesn't get rendered. So we don't see it when rendering. Make sure that both of these objects have the collision in physics, like this. Ok, now if you haven't ended constructing this, the arrangement, we can do it right now. Because we need to know how many pieces we will have for our next step. And after having all our pieces in the place, we need to count how many pieces we have because we need to know how many frames we need to simulate. And let's say the first piece starts falling at frame 1 and we are going to wait 3 seconds between every piece. So if you have an animation of 30 frames per second and we multiply by 3 seconds, it's going to give us 90 frames. And after 90 frames a new piece will fall, like in Tetris. So if we have 15 pieces and multiply by 90 frames, we get 1350 frames. And then we need 3 more seconds for the pieces to empty out and 3 more seconds to end the animation, which makes more 180 frames, giving a total of 1530 frames. And we need to know this value because we need to tell the pieces how many frames they are going to simulate. We pick the first piece and set the hand to that value we calculated and I set to 1800 because I wanted more seconds in the end. And now for the second piece, we said that it starts falling after 3 seconds, which is 90 frames. And the third piece starts falling at 180. And don't forget to put the end. And the third will fall at 270 frames. And so on. Don't forget to put the end frames. Now, if you want to create this effect of draining out, we count 3 seconds after the last piece dropped. In my case it's frame 1380. And we can keyframe by pressing I on top of the pull, the push and the bending. And you will need to repeat this process for every piece, by the way. Then we go forward to something like 3 more seconds. And we can keyframe the pull and the push to 0 0.2 and the bending to 2. Press I to keyframe. You can press I on top of these options to keyframe. And you have to repeat this for every piece. After doing so, you can press Shift A and see that only the first piece starts falling. Which is great. And then at the frame 90 the second piece falls and so on. And you can make the simulation a little bit faster if you turn off the subdivision modifier. It makes some difference. And then when the simulation is done we can turn it on for rendering. And by the way, when everything is on, you can press bake all dynamics. You will not see the simulation like when you press Shift A, but Blender will calculate it. And if you have pressed Shift A to see if everything falls well, you then have to press Cache to bake. Otherwise, you will lose your simulation. Be careful about it. Anyway, the only thing we are missing is the materials, lights, and camera. And I honestly, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because it's not the topic of this tutorial. But I can show you a few things in case you want to make something very similar. So let's open the node editor down here, select the first piece create a new material and rename it to fabric blue or something like that. And in the node editor we are going to need a texture coordinate. You can type in in search texture coordinate. Also search for a mapping and an image texture. 
you can duplicate the image texture with shift D like this because it's going to be our bump. And now we can connect the UV to the mapping, the mapping to the image texture and the image texture to the color in the fuse shader. And by the way, you can download great textures in the site called CG Textures, this one. And I went for the fabric section and found plenty of awesome stuff. And after you have downloaded your textures, we can open it in this button. And as you can see, the texture doesn't appear. And that's because we need to create the UVs. And to create the UVs, we need to enter in edit mode. And you can select these edges like this. Then we need to press Ctrl E to select Mark Sim. And then with A, you have to select all the geometry and press U so you can unwrap. Now the texture will appear and you can move it or resize it in the scale of the mapping. I'm just gonna show you one more trick, which is if you search for U, H U E, and add it to this line you can basically control the color of your texture which is great by the way and now we can add a bump connect to the normal of the diffuse and in this case we should use a black and white version of the image but this will do just select none color connect the mapping to the image texture like this and it's done and that's basically it for the fabric material if you want to create another fabric material with a different texture you can select another piece you go to materials add the fabric material like this press the plus sign to duplicate it and we and now we only need to change the image texture select the edges press ctrl e to mark the seam create the uvs with you you know and that's pretty useful and pretty easy The material for the wall is pretty much the same, I just downloaded a brick texture from the CG textures. And now, just the final notes, for the light I use the point, move it to around here, press use note and set this to 2500 with a warm color. And the neon thing you see in the back is made with a cube and an emissive material nothing special just remember to go to the object and in cycle settings and check ray visibility to the camera and shadow so it doesn't appear when rendering and this camera was set perpendicularly to the wall and with a focal length of 35 and that's pretty much it guys in the render tab select the resolution the start and the end frame select how many frames where the frames are going to be saved the file output, I used sampling of only 60 because it's too many frames and I turned on motion blur with a value of 0 0.6 and with this curvature. Finally, you can select one piece and press bake all dynamics, wait for blender to create the bake and then if everything is alright you can press animation to render everything. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of soft bodies. I really liked the outcome and it was a really great idea from Nico Tsatic. I hope you subscribe for weekly Blender and game development tutorials. And if you want to check my Patreon, you can get this scene there and other stuff. And thanks for watching guys, see you in the next tutorial.